Oh, oh, um, hey, um, I didn't see you there. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, would you look at the hours? Um, it is time for a fun fact, yeah? Um, ah, did you know the Mayan language, you know, those ancient squiggly heads are actually very similar to the modern Japanese one? Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Well, that's all I have got for today. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe and I'll see you around, okay? What? That's not enough? Oh, come on. Can I just do one single low effort video for once? You need proof? Okay, fine. Um, I guess I'll figure something out. Um, hmm. Ah, I have an idea. One eternity later. And what better way to explore the similarities between Japanese and the Mayan language than at the heart of the Mayan culture itself. I am at Honduras and I'm at the city called Coparuenas. There used to exist a majestic city that was one of the peaks of Mayan civilization. And let's see how the ancient Mayan language compares to the modern Japanese culture. Let's go. Maya language, like Japanese language, have two major components. The first one is logographic images, and the second one is syllabic components. So the first one is called logograms. It is similar to Chinese and is very similar to what kanji is in Japanese. And what the logogram is, is that the shape itself represents the meaning of the word. So if you look at a word and it looks like a puma, then it is a puma. If you look at the word, it looks like water, then it means water. It has no indication of how it should pronounce. <coughs> and here you can see the Mayan blocks are constructed like Chinese and Korean. So you can see it each has a left part and a right part. And some of them have upper and bottom part as well. And what they will do is actually there's another way of speaking Mayan, or writing Mayan that is. That is to use each part and you construct it phonetically, almost exactly like Korean. And what they will do is that, for example, if you want to say the word banana, you will put ba at the left and then na on the top right and then na on the top left. So the word itself doesn't look like anything like banana, but by just looking at it and knowing how to pronounce it, you will eventually get the meaning of this word. So that is why Mayan has been so difficult to translate in the past years because there are different schools of thought and they are always arguing with each other. So here is a Mayan example. Both of these glyphs mean the word jaguar. And you can clearly see the one on the left is a logogram because without even a basic knowledge of the Mayan language, you can see that it resembles a jaguar, complete with the teeth, eyes, and even an ear. However, the downside is that you will never know how to pronounce this word. Meanwhile, on the right side, this word is constructed phonetically. It also means jaguar. The pronunciation of the word in Mayan is balam. So this glyph is simply constructed by sticking the parts that stands for ba, la, and ma together in order to form the word that pronounces jaguar. The good thing about this glyph is that with just a simple training of the Mayan alphabet, one can pronounce basically every single word in the language. But that person will never know that this word means jaguar. So the hieroglyph on the left is similar to kanji in Japanese, while the one on the right is similar to the writing method of hiragana. Okay, let's go back to the real world. Since Mayan, like Egyptians as well as the modern Japanese, have this really weird quirk in their language, that is, a combination of syllabic words, that is, the combination of A, B, C, D, E, into a complete word, but it has absolutely no showing of what it means, and a logogram, which means it is basically a drawing that means the whole thing. 
And it creates a really interesting situation is that it comes up with the same ways to distinguish some of the very complicated logograms as Japanese. In Japanese, in kanji, you will use furigana to mark, especially for children in children's textbooks, of how this word should be pronounced. Well, it doesn't mean anything for its meaning, but it still helps the children to understand. And same thing came up in later Mayan text is that some of the older logograms have become so complex and so obscure that scribes would simply add on extra text on the side so it will become more meaningful. Let's go back to the mighty beast of the jungle, the jaguar. Besides these two ways of writing the jaguar, both purely phonetically as well as purely logographically, there's actually a few other ways to write the word. In order to preserve the integrity of the logogram, a lot of the scribes later decided to add the phonetic parts onto the original logograph that resembles the jaguar in order to clarify that this word is really pronounced balam. So you can see, they just stuck the phonetical parts to the left, right, and bottom of the original glyph in order to form a much more complex, yet much more approachable word for this fierce beast. The current situation of Japanese, especially in children's card games and textbook, is exactly the same as Mayans trying to make sure these old logograms stay in place by adding extra little things on the top, on the side, or in the bottom. And another useful and rather interesting quirk of having such logograms and syllabic construction of the same language is that Mayan ended up using what the Japanese called okurigana. Okurigana is basically using a certain sound that represents a tense change or a personal change that has only pure grammatical sense onto a logogram because the logogram itself as a picture cannot change. If you change the picture, it completely loses its meaning. So what they will do is actually have a logogram that is complete. But for example, you have a word like eat, right? That is represented by a whole picture. So you cannot change this picture if you do not want to lose its meaning. But if I want to express that I eat it or I yolt, right? In English, it's complicated. I want to express the past tense of the verb eat. What do I do? Because this is an entire logogram, I cannot make any changes to it. Well, the Japanese and the Mayans did the same thing. They added something that represents the past tense. And then you stick it on the top, on the bottom, on the left. It depends on the language, it depends on the time, it depends on the region of the Mayan. And it will express it is a past tense of this logogram. And then that will be a perfect solution to something that is almost unsolvable because Chinese uses completely all logogram as a language and Chinese doesn't have any verbal tenses because you simply cannot change it. In Chinese, in order to express time, you have to use a context like I eat yesterday because there's no way you can express the word ate. Right? It is the same thing in Mayan, except what they did is exactly the same as the Japanese. In Japanese, whenever they have a verb that is actually a kanji, which is basically a Chinese word, and they want to express that I ate yesterday in the past tense, they will stick something at the bottom of it. And then here in Mayan, it's exactly the same. The, the thing that it sticks onto it used to come from another logogram as well both in the case of Japanese and the Mayan. But of course, since it only has a grammatical purpose, it has lost all of its meaning. And that is why Japanese and Mayan are so similar. Well, I certainly hope that you liked this video. And if you want to see more, please don't hesitate to check out more similar videos on my channel. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And I will see you around.